and someone that we have been praying for for many years. We have prayed for her and her sister Natalie. And every time we pray for her, we, we don't, uh, don't have a face to put the prayer to, you see. And then finally, Andrew gave us uh, two photos. And as a father, he also got the two daughters mixed up. But we forgive you. I think they forgive you also. And today, we are very glad, Geraldine, to welcome you to Tabernacle of Praise. Huh? And hope you enjoy the service. <laughs> You know, God is a, a very good God. And um, it's amazing how, uh, as a pastoral team, Pastor Kwe and I, uh, we come into the church on different days so that we, you always have a pastor in the church, all right, on every day. And the amazing thing is, the other day we were sitting and we were talking and say, it's amazing, you know, how uh, we never ever sat down to divide our, job, our jobs, all right? You take care of this, I take care of that. We never did that. But everything sort of fell into place. Because we discovered that the secret is in the calling and the gifting. When you walk in your calling and you walk in your gifting, even when you're working in a team, you find that everything falls into place. He likes to do funerals, so thank God let him do all the funerals. I enjoy weddings. Of course, you know, La Chabo always like weddings, right? The bride's so beautiful and all that. So he's given me the task of doing weddings. And uh, he, he's uh, very um, uh, interested in doing the cell notes and all that. So let him do, okay? And so we, and whereas for me, I like to meet people. So he hates to meet people. Even taking uh, visitors out, uh, our visiting pastors out, is a chore to him. Whereas I like taking people out. I sit there and then talk. But of course, some are very difficult to talk, uh, but never mind, praise the Lord. Most of the speakers are very easy people to uh, be friends with. And so I will do that. So you find that God is very fantastic. And uh, last week when he was sharing on um, communion, right? And it suddenly resonated with a book I was already reading. I was reading a book, it's called Unfinished Business. Ah. Returning the Ministry to the People of God. And it's written by a man called Greg Ogden. Okay? Actually, he wrote a book earlier on in 1990. And in that book, it was titled The New Reformation. Can I have my slides huh? ready? All right. Okay, the book is called The New Reformation. So, what he was saying is that when Martin Luther uh, led the Reformation, it took off, but it never really uh, reached full maturity. All right? So, in the first Reformation, you had the priesthood of believers. We are all priests before God, which means uh, the Bible tells us we can come boldly into the presence of God. Which is why uh, prayer is such an exciting thing. Because we come before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who made the heavens and the earth, the Lord of all the universe. And we have direct access to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But in the second reformation, which the first reformation never truly uh, released, you find that we are priests to one another and our world. That means I'm a priest to you, you are a priest to me, and we are priests to the world. All right? I know Moses is looking very confused. We shall explain later. I like to look at your faces you know, when I'm sharing. Sometimes uh, some of you look very sad. Sometimes some of you look very confused. Sometimes some of you look very puzzled. So I see a puzzled face, but now he's smiling, so maybe the light has come, okay? So in the first Reformation, you, it placed the Bible in the hands of the people of God. Remember or not, that's so how we get, came out with so many translations and uh, so many versions. Now you can choose the difficult King James one, or you can choose the easier to understand uh, New Living Translation, or even the English Standard Version. So it placed the Bible in the hands of the people. But this second reformation that is going to explode, that's going to erupt, that's going to come and take over our lives and, and really burst out of the church, this ref second reformation is ministry in the hands of the people. 
When the first Reformation came, it was only the Bible. We know how to read, we know how to interpret and all that. But then we never really caught on on what the Word of God can do in our lives, what the Spirit of God can do in our lives and what when we allow the Word and the Spirit to work within us, how we can move and be catapulted into our calling and our ministry. Okay, And in the first Reformation, much as uh, Martin Luther wanted to to uh, reform the church, the church still remained an institution. Can we have the third point? Yeah, the church was still an institution. Whereas now, today, we want to see something different. And God is doing something different. God is using the church. And the church is an extension of the life of Jesus on earth. Which was why Pastor Kuei last week told us, the church is not an organization. It is an. Semua sudah lupa. Eh, I will tell him you forgot. You know. So what is the church? Church is an organism. Don't be afraid of saying the word lah. It's a very nice word. Organism. Because we are all organisms, right or not? Huh? Are you a, a an organization? No, we are an organism. Okay. So the church is an organism. And we are all channels of the Holy Spirit's work, which is why we say what? Not by might, nor by power, but, but by His Spirit, God's Spirit. All right? We are channels. And uh, as you allow God to work in you, you find that power goes through you. We are stewards of the unique shape. Did I bring my shape up? Shape, shape, shape. Where are you? Oh, here. After us, we are going to go through this. Uh. We are all uniquely made. All of you are shaped differently. And God has given you that particular shape and that particular motivation in life, in your heart. He made you so uniquely you. And so instead of filling the church with slots, we need a, a, a administrative assistant, we need a project manager, we need this. No! We are going to move away from that. We are going to look into your shape, which are your spiritual gifts. How many of you don't know your spiritual gift? Wow, semua tau, ah. So after when I feel, uh, when you fill in the form, uh, there should be no exceptions, okay? <laughs> ah, then do you know your heart? I know all of you have got a heart beating inside, right? But what is your heart? What is the thing that drives you? What is the thing that interests you? What is the thing that if given a choice, would you uh, like to handle little children or uh, teenagers or you find them oh, very troublesome, teenagers, uh, a lot of problems. Uh. Then, uh, or you want old people, oh, even worse, more, even more problems. Okay? Or you want to handle young adults or you want to handle married couples. So this is where your heart is. All right? Or better still, has God given you a heart for the community? The poor that is around us, Surrounding us, okay? And then what are your abilities? Some of you are doctors, some are engineers, some are teachers. We have got a lot of teachers in this uh, congregation, okay? So is God doing something? Reminding us of something? Of what we can do? What about your personality? Some of you are very quiet. Ask you to do it. I don't want, I don't want. I hide behind. Uh, we, we, I don't want to be in the forefront. Some, uh, you put them on stage, hallelujah, they jump about very happy. Okay? Uh, but then, uh, some, I, I tell you, uh, some people wear camouflage. You know? Like me, I wear camouflage. I'm normally a person who doesn't like to be in the forefront. And if you put me in a strange situation uh, where there are a lot of strangers, I will try to okay, hide in a corner, observe, observe everybody, and then uh, speak to only people I know. But because of my calling, because of what God has given me, my responsibility, you find that uh, I will go up and shake hands with people. It is something that, that God has to break from me. Okay? So I tell you, uh, personality, uh, can you, God can change us. All right? He changes us from glory to glory. And what about your experience? Some of you have maybe um, managed companies before. 
Some of you are good plumbers. Some of you are good electricians. All those experiences, or maybe bad experiences. You have uh, lost a spouse. You have lost children. You, God can use you to minister to someone in that situation. So that is your shape, okay? So instead of uh, filling our church with, uh, we are going to do this, we are going to do that. No, we want to find what is in you all. And we are going to draw it out. If there are enough people who care for the community, hallelujah, then we are going to do something for the community. Okay? If there are enough people, like example, the, the um, uh, Alpha. Alpha, I, I want, I'm so excited. Because uh, Kenny and I attended the Alpha conference uh, two years ago. We were the only two from Tabernacle of Praise. No, shame, 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 shame. And then when we came back, we said, how to start? Uh, two of us only. At that time, not pastor yet. Ma. Not pastor. A little bit difficult to push things, okay? So, but now I'm pastor, I'm okay, you know. You go attend any conference, uh, you come back, you're excited, you tell me, okay? You tell me and I will find a way for you, for your excitement to, to be uh, realized. So, at that time, I wasn't a pastor yet. So, and also last year was our transition. So I was thinking, I, I want to do Alpha. I want to do Alpha. Shall I do it in the care group? But then uh, God is a very special God. Our God, His, His thoughts are higher than ours. His, His ways are higher than ours. He decided to spark the spark with the uh, youth impact. And yesterday, do you know how many newcomers they had? They had 13 newcomers. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Aren't you excited? God is on the move. You see here, uh, when you have something that is in your heart, when you have something that is uh, shaped to you, you do it. You say, God, use me. I am your vessel. And God can do marvellous, wonderful things in our midst. That's 13, no. We are going to, uh, yesterday, the intercessors prayed. We covered them with the blood of Jesus already, we are making sure that all 13 will last through the 13 sessions and they will be planted in tabernacle of praise. Let's give the Lord another big hand. You believe God can do that? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that is the wonderful thing about moving with shape and not, you know, thinking man's way. Whatever God wants to do, let us move with the Spirit. So, we are going to look at T.O.P. as a church, huh, where church ministry takes the shape of the gifted people. Okay? We are going to be uh, looking for gifted people. If you have a gift, you have a passion in a certain area, come and see us. It doesn't mean that today you see me, tomorrow you start the ministry. Huh? We might have to um, check with the pastoral staff, we have to pray about it, and sometimes timing might not be right. Okay, so don't say, ah, you pastor, say already, ah, I come to talk to you, you never let me do anything. Huh? But let us, you know, be wise, okay? And because of that, I've taken this text from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. And the text says, For this reason I remind you, to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Let us pray. Father, I truly just empty myself of me, O oh God. I just ask, O oh God, that Lord, you just fill and use me as your vessel. That Lord, whatever you need to speak to th this congregation, whatever things that you wish to impart to them, O oh God, whatever things that you want T.O.P. to do, O oh God, that, Lord, we will hear clearly from you, O oh God. And not only will we be hearers, but we'll be doers of your word. And so I just surrender myself into your hands, and I pray for each and every one of us here, O oh God, that we will be, hear the voice of God, heed it, and run with it, and obey you, and give you pleasure. So we give thanks for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the first thing you need to do, the title of my message is, Fan your gift into flame. Fan it, fan it, fan it. Okay? And, Paul doesn't say here, that you start a fire. He doesn't say, uh, start 
a fire with your gift? He says, fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. All right? The gift is already in you. And so the first thing we need to do is to discover our gift. All right? Discover your gift. Just now I asked you whether you know your gift. And all of you kept quiet. I assume uh, silence means consent. Consent means yes. That means all of you know your gift. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's already half the battle won. Okay? Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 7, uh, the Bible tells us, and uh, Paul wrote, he says, what? There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. Again, we go back to the Spirit. You see how important the Spirit is for the Second Reformation to really take off? We must be yielded to the Spirit. And it is the Spirit that distributes all these gifts to you. What He has given me, He has given uh, something different to my husband. He has given something different to John. He has given something different to... Uh, Parents, uh, everyone has something that is different, all right? And it says here there are different kinds of service but the same Lord. Okay? He gives us all different things, but it is Jesus who is the Lord. And there are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. And it says in verse 7, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for common good. It says to each one, everyone. No one is left out. No one is uh, um, being favoured or whatever. Everyone has one gift, alright? He has given us, each and every one of us, a gift. You have heard this many times. But are we? Does, did it really sing into us? Because everyone can do something for God. Remember the story I told you about the anybody, somebody and the nobody? Ha, we have a lot of nobodies here around, okay? Nobody will do it. And somebody must do it. Anybody can do it, but nobody is doing it, okay? So here, everyone can do something for God. And we are going to look into some things that are very sad, all right? When you look into a church, there are some things that are very sad. Number one is the tragedy of unopened gifts. The tragedy of unopened gifts. I don't know about you, huh? But I love gifts. Okay, I'm not asking you to give me things, okay? I, I love gifts. When I receive gifts, I'm very happy, okay? And then I cannot wait to open it. But there are some people uh, who don't open gifts, you know, or, or who are very careful. They will open, you know why? Can recycle the, the wrapping paper. Open carefully. I cannot, uh, I will simply tear and, and just dive into the gift. And if uh, people who give me food also... Uh, uh, you give me today, uh, if possible, tonight I will eat ready, okay? So, I am very excited when I receive gifts, but there are some people who are not aware of their gifts. And sometimes these gifts are so special. You have jumped ahead of me, my dear. So, some, sometimes these gifts are very special. I know of some people, these uh, people who have a lot of... Uh, the family wants to move out of the house. All right? And it's an ancestral home, sort of, where you know, they call the Chinese called Kong Chu. Uh, uh, that means uh, the grandfather's house. So, this grandfather's house, uh, they have a lot of all this old furniture and things like that. And they will ask the antique uh, collector to come and say, Okay, what do you want? Uh, how much do you want to pay for everything? You take lock, stock, and barrel. I don't care uh, about it, really. I'm not going to sell this. This cupboard, la, this chair, la, one by one, is too difficult. And then uh, the antique dealer will say, Oh, okay, all together, uh, yeah, broken already, a uh, chair with three legs only, what can I do? And all that. Then he'll say, Okay, I give you 10,000, and then he'll take everything. But do you know, uh, very often, uh, in the midst of all that so called junk, there is a gem. And that one piece, maybe it's a jewellery or maybe it's an antique kebaya or whatever, that few pieces of uh, antique items uh, can more than make up for the 10,000 already. And that is exactly the same with thing with us, you know. We might have all these hidden treasures within us. We have hidden treasures within us. And I believe all of you, and even me, there are some hidden treasures that we do not know we have. 
until you discover it, all right? And you didn't know of. So uh, when uh, someone comes to you and say, will you do this and this? Will you help uh, maybe um, sow something? Uh, will you help maybe feed the poor? Will you help uh, play the guitar? Then she cannot play. I can only play three chords. Okay, la, everyone sing that same song, three chords, and then sing in that key only, no other key. Okay? So we, we are not sure. You know, we, and we say, uh, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. But I want to challenge you. There are hidden depths within you. And never say, I cannot until you have tried it. And if the person asks me to try, I don't care, you know. You ask me to try, I will try. Then if I make a, a, a mess out of it, I tried what? I told you, I, I, I'm not sure, I can, I've never done it before, but you, since you asked me, I try. Nah. So, and then if it's a mess, not my fault, but it's your fault. <laughs> okay? So whatever it is, nah, I encourage you. If you're asked to do something, never say, I cannot. Like the multimedia. I don't know whether you all have noticed or not. Yiling, today uh, she's not around, uh, but Yiling is always behind at the multimedia. Is she? Oh, thank God! At least you have one time you can sit and listen to me and don't have to move things. Uh. Uh, so happy to see you there. So uh, she is training up people. We need more people at the multimedia. If not, that poor girl, uh, on Wednesday she will come and then she will not have her dinner or so. She'll come and do the... Uh, PowerPoint for us Then on Sunday morning She's down there Do you know she comes to church at 8.30 So that the Hokkien uh, service can have their PowerPoint And then after that she's here And after you all leave and go for your lunch She is still here, you know, doing what? Uploading the thing into hard disk for Kenny to take back To upload into Logos So, never say you can't So if Yiling come and ask you can you help in multimedia? Don't say you can't. Go there. If you make a mess, then she say, oh, I think you tabole. La. Then uh, you go off. Or you yourself also know you tabole. But at least you try, okay? I think uh, anyone who knows how to use a computer can, uh, and you are intelligent, and all of you are very intelligent people, so you can do it, okay? So there's the tragedy of the unopened gift. You didn't even open it, all right? Then there is also the tragedy of undiscovered gifts. This is on the part of the church, all right? On the part of the church. We can be very guilty of overlooking the gifts in others. We always look at the person and say, hmm, cannot run. Ah. Look at that person, tak boleh run. Mana, how can God use that? Cannot, cannot, cannot. And we put the cannot onto people. We, when we look at people, uh, we must see the can in them. What can they do? All right? What can they do? Now, on April the 11th, 2009, there was an unemployed, unknown 47-year-old woman. She climbed up on stage. She went up on stage. That was the stage for Britain's Got Talent. And if you look at her, you think, wow, this one are uh, like auntie like that, you know. Look at the clothes she wear. Look at her face. Not like, uh, who is the current one? Uh? Taylor Swift. So young, so slim, so pretty. Wear such nice clothes. She is old. She is not, uh, okay, uh, in world standard, uh, not pretty. Uh. Then she's not slim. And then she's not young. Okay, so everybody look at her, 47 years old, no, you've got to be kidding me, right? Britain's Got Talent is looking for talents, young people, alive one, uh, gung-ho people. And she was nervous. In fact, I think she was very terrified, all right? And when the audience looked at her, they looked, ah, yeah, this one cannot run. How, man? How did she ever go through all the qualifying rounds? The judges in the earlier rounds must be either deaf or blind or something wrong with them that can allow her to come on this stage, you know. Oh, wow, terrible, terrible. And so she walked and then she stood there. And she opened her mouth and she sang. And Susan Boyle sang, I dreamed a dream. Okay? This, this story always touches me. I'm very sorry, la, you've got a pastor, la, very gifted in waterworks. 
So she 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 sang the song I Dream a Dream from the uh, Les Miserables. It was, and I mean, you look at her, she was quivering in fear. And she was not the ideal idol, all right? And yet, she, when the voice came out, wow, it soared and it touched everyone. And soon, all the sniggerings, all the, can ah, this woman, ah, yo, look at her and all that, all that quietened down. All that quietened down. And then everybody stood up and gave her a standing ovation. You know, many times it's what we do with our the people around us. The people we see, we look at them and say, Ayah, too old already lah. Actually by world standard, nah, Pastor Kwe and I should be retired, not not starting our ministry now, you know. We're too old already, you know. When I attend LPN uh, Love Penang Network uh, meetings with other pastors, they are saying, uh, uh, we are slowly releasing to new ones. And they are saying, oh my goodness, and here we are picking up <laughs> the, the, the task. So, you know, we look at people and we say, Tabole, cannot. Hey, this fellow so rough and speak uh, the word so vulgar. How to be a, a, a leader? How can I use him and all that things? Uh? And we put the cannot on people, all right? But do you know, uh, I want to tell you something. Something very significant. Before her discovery on Britain's Got Talent, Susan Ball was singing. You know where she was singing? She sang as a member of her church choir. She sang as a member of a church choir. Now, for us, very often, uh, um, they say of Michelangelo, he, he's a very good sculptor. He sculpted the statue of David, very famous one, statue of David. But then when, you, when Michelangelo got that piece of marble, what did he see? Did he just see a piece of marble? You know, Michelangelo saw something in that marble. He saw a David in that marble. And with each chip of his chisel, uh, that David appeared. And so likewise, all of us, we are lumps of marble. But God can see that David in you. God can see that wonder, that beauty, that special thing that he has put in you. And he's going to draw it out. He's going to draw it out. And you find also that we want in T.O.P. to be a church where your gifts, your talents and your abilities are discovered. Okay, We do not want to have wonderful treasures in the midst of us that we bypass. We want it to be discovered. And so once you have discovered your gift, you find that you need to do the second thing, which is develop your gift. Here, Paul says, uh, fan into flame the gift of God. You have to do something about it. Some people say, I'm gifted. Right? I wait for God to open the door. Lah. I wait and wait and wait and wait and the door never open. Okay? So it says here, uh, we understand that an ember, you know what's an ember? An ember is uh, like you go campfire already or, or you go barbecue. After all the flames come out already, then the fire die down. Then you see uh, uh, all the little um, burnt pieces. It's covered by white ash outside, you know. But inside is still red. The fire is inside there. Now, there are two things that can happen to an ember. All right, the ember can either die out. You leave it long enough, you don't care about it. You pour water on it, even worse, it will just die off. But with that little ember, if you fan it, what will happen? It will burst into flame again. You can start another round of barbecue. So the the Greek word for this fan into flame is anazo purio. All right. And it is translated as stir up in New King James Version. And here we find uh, the word used is fan into flame. It is to keep the fire alive. I remember when I was young, there was a period of time when I stayed with my paternal grandmother. My mother is, uh, when my father married my mother, uh, we, we stayed with my mother's parents. This is in Chinese, they call it Qin Zui, all right? We stayed with my mother's parents. But for a period of two years, we were back with my father's parents. 
And when we were back there, they used the uh, wood stove to cook. All right? And I always see my auntie doing this. Whenever she wants the fire to uh, burn brighter, what does she do? She will have a metal pipe, you know, and then she will blow. Ah, you, you have done that before, huh? So you blow, 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 and then the fire will burn brighter. Or you go to the chakwe tiao man. Hi, he fry, 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 and then the fire is getting um, low. What happens? He starts his fan or he starts his mechanical fan nowadays. Uh, blow until you get all the sparks coming. So, there are also times when she would take a piece of paper and she would roll it up like that. You know, and then she would use it to dig among the, the embers. And then if there is an ember that is still has the fire, uh, you find that the paper will catch fire. And then she will put the kindling, everything, the wood, and then she will start a new fire. So this is what happens. When you have a gift, you must fan it, you must work at it, you must develop it. We have a responsibility for nurturing the gift that God has given us. It does not automatically flourish. Wow, you have gift only, uh, you suddenly can, um, can be superman or superwoman already. So there is a tragedy that we need to be careful of. Just as there's a tragedy of unopened gifts, the tragedy of undiscovered gifts, there is the tragedy of undeveloped gifts. And for this, let us look at Timothy, because this um, letter was written to Timothy. Now what was Timothy's gift? What do you think Timothy's gift was? It doesn't really say, you know, what Timothy's gift was. But in verse 8, Paul was telling Timothy, Hey, don't be ashamed of the Lord. Don't be ashamed of me, even though I'm a prisoner. Join me in the suffering from the gospel. And in verse 11, Paul also say, I, concerning himself, huh, that he was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher. And it was for those reasons that he's suffering. So we can deduce that Timothy must have been given the gift of preaching and teaching. All right? And his gift had to be nurtured. But, but, ah, this is where personality comes in. Timothy was a person who is um, very fearful. In 1 Corinthians, uh, when uh, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, he says, when Timothy comes, see to it that he has nothing to fear while he was with you. Wow, the Corinthians so fierce, you know. Can, can frighten uh, Timothy. I think Timothy must have been saying, telling Paul, uh, I think I'm very scared you know, to go to that church. Hey, we mustn't be a church like that. You know. People, when they come into TOP, they must be happy. Cannot, uh, they run out and they say they're so scared of us. Okay? And it says, No one then should treat him with contempt. That means they look at him, ah, yeah, This one can or not want to be a preacher. Okay? That was what they were saying. They were contemptuous of him. And in the, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, Paul specifically told Timothy, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. I think that was one of the causes why they looked down on him. Say, you half Greek and then you are so young, huh? you know the Torah, nah? you want to come and teach us about the word of God. Nah? So they were looking down on him. But thank God, thank God. I mean, if Timothy was left like that, even though God has given him his gift, it would have died because he wouldn't do anything about it. He's so scared. He's so scared that he cannot move. He's frozen. But he had Paul. Ah, Paul is the other opposite. Lah. Very strong, very powerful, very, very aggressive one. So he had Paul to nurture him. He had Paul to mentor him. He had Paul to show him the way. All right? So... How do we apply this thing about undeveloped gifts? What is your gift? All of you know. What are you doing to develop your gift? If you have a gift and people ask you, um, we are short of worship uh, leaders, will you come and be a backup? Uh, I, uh, you audition. Uh, if you sing off-key, then a bit difficult. Uh. But if not... Uh, Come and audition and be, be a backup. Okay? So there are a lot of things that we can do. We must develop it. We must find a place to use it. Alright? And uh, serve with it. And um, make sure if you don't know how to use it, then learn. There are some people who ask also, can uh, the church uh, teach um, 
I mean, you are short of uh, people. Can you teach uh, people how to play drums? Uh? We cannot. Because when you come into the ministry, uh, yes, we will send you for training. We will send you for conferences, you know, to uh, develop you. But you must at least have the basic. So you must go and spend some time and money uh, learning about drums first so that you can come and you can ping pong piang a little bit. And then Elvin will say, uh, okay, not bad, I can train you. Uh, then then they, they, you progress from there, okay? So that's very how you develop it. But if you are already moving into the, your gift, you are already very strong in your gift. You are, example like uh, our brother Jason, he's our missions director and I take my hats off to him. Uh, he's a fantastic, wonderful missions director. Then he has become a Paul to many Timothys. I know he has his disciples. That's very good. If you are already moving in your gift, like uh, Pastor Kuei also has many disciples. So we must, you know, pass on. We must not be selfish. You be the mentor. You, if you have already developed your gift, then you develop someone else's gift. Alright? Someone else's gift. So that's the tragedy of undeveloped gifts. There's also the tragedy of unappreciated gifts. Sometimes it's not just other people don't appreciate your gifts, no. Sometimes these people, they don't appreciate the gift that they have. When you look at your gift, we want to compare. All right? We want to compare. Okay, I have to confess. I also compare. And when we compare, we covet someone else's gift. And I have to confess, I also covet other people's gifts. Example, I like to sing. My greatest dream, if I could sing, I dream a dream, is to be a singer for the Lord. But God has in His own way I removed my voice so that I can't sing already. But that is what I want now. So when I look at Grace and I hear her sing, I say, God, I want that. I want that gift. And so we shouldn't compare. What I have, Grace don't have, ma. Uh, what she has, I don't have, ma. Right? So very fair. And God is very fair. God is very fair. So what you have, other people don't have. But what other people have, you don't have. It's okay because you have what other people don't have. You understand me or not? Or am I confusing you? Okay? So we should not cover someone else's gift. Spiritual gifts won't flourish if we have a low self-esteem or we have pride. Sometimes we have pride and say, my gift is the best. I'm pastor, ma. I get to stand in front of you. you know. I get to talk to all of you. You know, you all cannot talk back to me. You know, ah, that is pride, really, lah. Then, or we have low self-esteem. I don't want to do lah. You know, that one uh, can sing so well. Sister Grace can sing so well. Ask me to be backup. I cannot sing very well. Ayah, you backup only wa. Why so uh, troublesome? Must sing very well. No need one. Huh? And as you continue singing more and more, you find you improve. Do you know why I can uh, tell you that? I was uh, visiting a lot of uh, cell groups back in those days when uh, Pastor Geoffrey was here. Uh, uh, and then there are certain cell groups, I tell you, uh, God has a sense of humor. Lah. He will put all those people who cannot sing, who are tone deaf, in the same cell group, you know. Probably to save those who can sing very well. Because if you can sing very well, you go there, you sure die. You sure die. You cannot tahan the, the madness that's going on. But these people really worship the Lord. They really love the Lord. And when they sing, they sing their hearts out. They shake the whole neighborhood. I think every, every Friday, uh, the neighborhood closed their windows, everything, all that. But do you realize, I realized something. All those people who cannot sing well, who are tone deaf, who cannot keep time, who cannot even come in at the same key. Hey, as the years pass, uh, they improve, you know. Some of them are now can sing already. Ah, so that's why. why how did I get to that? Uh? Okay, so uh, we, we do not cover other people's gifts. But whatever we have, we develop. Uh, Alright, we develop. And uh, the worst thing, even worse than you covered, uh, you begin to mimic someone else's gift. That means you see uh, Pastor Kwe. 
Then Pastor Kuei always say, and finally, uh, before I end, uh, uh, so you also preach also, and finally, uh, before I end, uh, so we mimic, mimic someone. So we shouldn't mimic someone. You know why? I said already, you are uniquely you. Right? There's only one you. There's only one you. So you are the you that the church needs. You are the you that T.O.P. needs. All right? Gordon Cosby says, Christ makes each of us something unlike any other creation fashioned by God. Something wonderful. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're wonderful. Something exciting. You are exciting. And unique. You are unique. Huh. Something, you are so wonderful, you are so exciting, you are so unique Something specifically needed in the total body of Christ If you are not here, there is a hole in our, the body okay? This uniqueness, this very self that is so hard to describe huh? This charismatic person Hey, you know you are charismatic, you know, because the Spirit of God is in you, all right? Charismatic person is the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is the primary gift we bring to the body. You, you are the gift that comes to this body. You are the gift of God to this church. And I thank God for each and every one of you because you are all special, wonderful gifts of God. So if we devalue, uh, if we don't appreciate, we devalue our gifts and the gifts of others, it really undermines the church as an organism. Because remember, church is an organism. We cannot say the foot is useless. Wait until one day you sprain your, your foot and you cannot walk and then you tell me whether your foot is uh, important or not. We cannot say, uh, and the ear cannot say, I want to be the eye, the eye... Uh, it's going to look very odd with one ear here, two ears here. Huh? It's, uh, God in His mercy uh, put our ears where they are and our eyes where they are. And we all cannot be eyes. So appreciate, appreciate what God has given you. All right? And the worst thing is the tragedy of unused gifts. When God has given you a gift and you don't use it, Paul admonished Timothy, he says, Do not neglect your gift. And first Peter, Peter wrote in 4 verse 10, it says, Each of you should use, you should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully. And the best biblical illustration on unused gifts would be in the parable of the talents. I think you all know the parable of the talents, right? So the talent, um, sometimes when we read, you know, oh yeah, this person get five talents, that one, one. Uh, one talent, two talents, what is a talent? Okay? Now, a talent is worth 15 years of wages. 15 years of wages. Can you imagine that? You work 15 years and you get one talent. And so on, uh, that means this um, owner uh, has given to his servants a big, huge, humongous amount of money, uh, of finances to invest. And it is very astounding because in those days, people were living from day to day. You, if you don't work today, you might not be able to eat tomorrow. And so ser servant number one received how many talents? Five. Which is 5,000 gold coins, which he invested. Servant number two received two, so he also invested. And servant number three received one, what did he do with it? Ah, he hid it, alright? He hid it. He didn't want to use it. And so, when the, the master came back, the first servant came and said, See, master, I've doubled your investment. Second servant came, also very happy, I've doubled your investment. And the third servant says, What? Oh, I am so uh, careful with your investment. I didn't invest at all. No, I hid it. And the master was very, very angry with him and even took away his initial talent. So the principle here is we must use our gifts. We must develop it. Don't hide or neglect it. Sometimes we have a false sense of humility. I, I, you know why I can tell you all these things? Because I've lived through them already. Back in the time when I was in school, uh, I used to write. I used to write, and in those days, uh, this one, uh, a lot of people not born yet. In those days, when the straits echo, 
was a newspaper in Penang. How many of you have heard of Straight Cycle? Oh, okay. Got a, quite a number, my generation. Uh, nah. So when the Straight Cycle was in, they, they have a, a, a special um, section, you know, where they give you a topic and you write about it and then uh, they will give three prizes or something like that. And I would write in and I would earn quite some money from there, you know. I would write in and every week, uh, not every week, uh, 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 maybe alternate weeks or some weeks, I'll get 20 ringgit, I'll get 10 ringgit. And it's very good income for a, uh, a student in those days. Uh, 20 ringgit in those days, very not ringgit. We, in those days, we said $20. But not US dollars, uh, dollars, <laughs> Malaysian dollars. And we have all that. And I would, um, and I would uh, be very happy. But do you know what? I was... I, I hid my gift. When I wrote in, uh, I didn't use my real name. When it's printed, it was printed under a pseudonym. You know pseudonym? Macam I'm some great author, must need pseudonym. So I used the pseudonym. And I realized that it's a false humility. You know? And when people, uh, my friends in my uh, class say, hey, you read that one? Uh, hey, that person, very good writer. You know? And they say, oh, yeah, yeah, but actually it's me. I don't know, I don't know what stupidity made me uh, go and hide myself like that. Actually, it's very stupid, isn't it? If you can write, why not? Maybe the newspaper will have taken me as reporter. Maybe I could have been editor now uh, instead of pastor. <laughs> okay, so whatever it is, I didn't do that. And I can understand there are certain things that cause us to do irrational things like this. This is irrational. No? It's not, not a, something a sensible person would do. But I did it. All right. So the tragedy is if we don't use those gifts. So we must use those gifts. And remember, everybody is somebody in the body of Christ. So after you have div uh, discovered your gift, after you have uh, um, developed your gift, what do you do? You must deploy your gift. Uh, deploy is an army term. You know what is deploy or not? That means uh, the uh, commander say, there's a war in Afghanistan, you go to Afghanistan. There's a war in Saudi Arabia, you go to Saudi Arabia. It's a, it's a military term. So you must deploy your gift. You must position yourself. You must use it. You must make sure it has an impact and it is accomplishing something that is the reason why God gave you that gift, all right? Now, why do flames die down? The Bible tells us, do not put out the Spirit's fire. You know the Spirit's fire? We can quench it. Why do flames die down? First thing, no fuel. No more fuel. And in the Christian life, our energy, our fuel is God's presence and His Word. So that's why it's so important. Do you know uh, how many of you realize there's a little notice outside already that worship does not start at 10.30? What time does uh, worship start? 10.15. Why do we come at 10.15? For pre-service prayer. All right? We want to build our people up to want to seek the presence of God to want to soak in the presence of God so that when the worship leader starts the worship, uh, we are already, you know, running already. We are, not, we are not on first gear. We are already on second, third gear, ready to go to fifth, sixth, seventh or eighth gear already, alright? So that is fuel and we need to read the Word of God, which is why Mary, uh, uh, Sister Mary has a group reading the Bible every Sunday. So if you read the Bible, come here for your pre-service uh, prayer, I tell you at least you count in today's devotion. All right? Then the second thing that causes flames to die down will be suffocation. You know how you stop the flames from uh, rising up? You put something, cover it. You stop the flames from getting oxygen. So it is the stuff of life that suffocates us, that causes us not to be able to breathe. And uh, Paul says, Demas, he named one person, don't ever name your son Demas. Huh? Demas, he says, oh, love the world and all its stuff. And Demas deserted Paul and went back to Thessalonica. That, those are the things that suffocate us, the things in the world huh, that pulls us back. All right? 
And uh, we could be looking for fulfillment in the wrong places. Well, I want friends, uh, I go and hang out at uh, Starbucks and all that or whatever. You know, it doesn't work that way. The true fulfillment is only found in the presence of God. And the third thing is we could be spread too thin. Coal, if you have a, a fire, you spread it out. That means you don't put it together, you spread it out. You find that you will also die down. All right? It will also die out. And we need the, that's because it, we need connection. Pastor Koi's message yesterday, we need to be connected. If you are spread out, you find that you will lose your fire. So fire needs air, oxygen. It needs the spirit in our spiritual life. We need a constant supply of the spirit. And Timothy was a naturally timid person. And so the, Paul says, hey, God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but what type of spirit? A spirit of power, of love and of self-discipline. And actually, the word timid means coward, you know. Paul is saying, hey, God didn't make you a coward. In fact, God did not make any of us cowards. He always say, well, be strong and courageous. We are not supposed to be cowards, all right? And then God has given us, instead of timidity, God has given us a spirit of bonus. He has given us a spirit that does not make us a slave again to fear. Alright? Because why? We know God loves us. And perfect love casts out all fear. So we are going to say no to fear and yes to faith. And we are going to look into what is going to counteract this uh, spirit of fear. It is the spirit of power. Many times, one of the excuses we give for not serving is, I can't do it. It's too hard. It's too hard. But here, in Acts 1.8, what does um, the Bible tell us? You will receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Do all of us have the Holy Spirit? So do you all have power? Yes. And here the word power is dunamis. It is like the word that we use uh, to, to describe our dynamo. How many of you remember cycling with bicycles that has dynamos? Ah, also my generation. Huh? Then you find out uh, you cycle faster. Huh? Wow, the light brighter. You, know? you slow down, uh, no strength already. Uh, yeah, the light becomes dimmer, 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 dimmer. So uh, this, this dunamis uh, is something that must be kept in motion. This spirit of power must be kept in motion. It is not something that, you know, you let it die down. You must keep working on it. You must keep being filled with it. You must keep having that constant supply. Remember I uh, preached on Zechariah 2.4 and we talked about the two olive trees and the lamb that is burning. We need that live olive trees, you no, know, to give us that pure oil in order to burn, all right? Constant supply. So why do we feel so powerless? Again, it boils down to, in Luke 4, we read about Jesus. Jesus was filled by the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit. He fought temptation through the Spirit's instruction, which is through the Word. And He returned in the power of the Spirit. Now maybe you find that you do not have that power. Why? Why? Why don't we have that power? It's because we did not do what Jesus did. Right? We are not filled. We are not led. We did not look into the word of God. And we did not return with the power of God. So we need to realize that that is the important thing. And Paul uh, couples power with the spirit of love. Here where we say, uh, I cannot do it, it's too hard. God has given you the power. You can do it. Here, the excuse is, someone else can do it. I don't have time. Ah, everyone also don't have time, right? How many of you have enough time to spare? Nothing to do, so free. Very few of us. You ask anybody, nobody will confess to that. All right? But if we cultivate the love for the body of Christ, you find that you will make time for the things that are important. It says here that God has poured out His love into our hearts. You know how much God loved the church? He loved the church 
so much that he died for the church. And so, if God who has poured out his love, that same love he has for the church is inside us, we should love the church too, right? But sometimes uh, we live our lives as if we don't love the church, you know. We don't love the church. And when we find that we are doing things, we find, I are so difficult, I don't have time. Nah. But if you love someone, you will make time. I was doing some premarital counselling and I was telling them, the important thing about love is time. It requires time. Love is not spelled L-O-V-E, it's spelled T-I-M-E. If you love God, you will spend time huh, doing the things that pleases God. And if the things are difficult, Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.14, it says what? Christ's love compels us. Sometimes people, I, I, I just baptised uh, someone uh, last Sunday, and then they say, oh, thank you so much for coming, uh, for uh, taking your time off to baptise. Hey, what is it that's so difficult? I was very filled with joy. I was so excited. You know, baptizing someone is a joy. It's wonderful because the love of God compels us. We do something because of the love of God. So when you have the love of God in you, His longings and His desires will come to you. And Jesus, when He was asked, He says, The Son of God did not come to be served, but to serve. That was God's purpose. And we will want to serve too. And of course, our motivation must be love. If God did not give you a spirit of love and it was a spirit of pride or whatever, you'd be doing it for the wrong reasons. But if it is for love, then you find that uh, Paul says, if I do not have love, it will be like a clanging gong, a resounding cymbal. I'll make a lot of noise. But if it is of love, God is pleased and God is blessed. Right? And... Uh, even as we look at love, it is such an important uh, spiritual fruit that we need to cultivate huh? so that we can love one another. And if we have love, you find that character will supersede your charisma. You can do mighty things. No, you can heal the uh, sick. You can bring the dead to life again. But if you have not love, it is nothing. Okay? So if you are too busy to be involved in church, May I tell you, you are just too busy. Okay? You are just too busy. And last, Paul said, we are given a spirit of self-discipline, which is a sound mind. Here, you are not saying, I have no time. You are not saying that it is too hard. You are saying, I'm not qualified. Okay? I'm not qualified. But here, discipline means what? You have self-control. You know how to prioritize things. Alright? And it by prioritizing things, uh, you do not limit what God can do in your life. Okay? So God is in the business of empowering people to accomplish extraordinary things. And God loves to use weak and foolish people to shame the strong and the wise. And we need discipline. Where does discipline come in? Again, tie in with our Pastor Kui's message yes, uh, last week. We need the discipline of communion. All right? The discipline of communion, which is um, spending time with God in the Word and in prayer. And so we encourage you uh, to come for our prayer meeting. I, I'm going to meet our sister Felicia. We are going to plan some interesting things uh, for our prayer and intercession ministry. It's not going to be the same old, same old thing. We are going to see where God leads us. Exciting things. God is a God of new things huh? and He's going to do marvellous things. So we are going to have to exercise the discipline of communion. And the next discipline is the discipline of community. We must make ourselves available and we must be in community. You must be in that care group that God has put you in because that is where you are going to grow. That is where you are going to love God and you are going to serve. So here... Greg Ogden said, he said, I have a dream. Remember Susan Ball's dream? He said he had a dream. I'm praying for the day when every member of this body will know that they have a valued role based on the ability to name their spiritual gifts and take responsibility to use them. Then this body will reflect the presence of the living Christ. And that is why body ministry is my passion. 
I believe the only way for the church to grow, the only way for the church to go is if we rise up, each and every one of us, and fulfill our roles in the body of Christ. Okay? And so, before I ask the uh, um, ushers to pass out this, uh, we are going to find out your shape. Remember I told you God has shaped you in a special way? We are going to uh, find out your shape. And I encourage all of you to fill up this form. And in order to make sure you all fill up the form, we are going to do it now. So, uh, ushers, can you please pass out to everyone one? Because I know, I give to you and I say bring back next week. Huh? Uh, I will only get back five forms because the rest are all at home. Okay, So let us do it now. Huh? Do it now and then uh, you can drop it off and then you can forget it until you get a call from one of the church workers. <laughs> And if you need a pen, also put up your hands. If you have received your form, shape, your passion can meet God's purpose. This one we copy a bit uh, from uh, uh, Rick Warren. One. Next year, we will try to tailor it, customize it. All right. So, fill up. First, first um, blank is your full name. Uh, no need IC name, lah, just the name that I can call you with. All right? Then mobile, don't, in fact, don't give me your IC name. I wouldn't know who. Sometimes we just know each other by you know, our, uh, the name, uh, Sister Esther. I don't know your Chinese name or so. Okay? So you just put Esther. All right? Then your mobile number and your email. So for those, has everyone received a, a form? Okay, here if you look at the, after you have filled up your name, your mobile number and your email, you turn to the other side. It says here, five ways God has shaped you, alright? It will talk about the spiritual gift, your heart, your abilities, your personality and your experiences, all right? So look at the first one first, spiritual gift. Now, uh, we have listed a few here. But if you think you're, you have a spiritual gift that is not listed here, put under others and please specify. So maybe like yours is prophecy, all right? It's not here, okay? It's not here. So you put under others, prophecy, if you think you're an apostle, you put apostle there or whatever, all right? Under others. And I believe all of us can at least tick one. Okay, next is the heart. The people I would like to serve most are, okay, what are the people you like to serve? If you have more than one, well and good, praise the Lord. All right? Some of you might want to serve um, maybe young married, young adults together with uh, college students, then you tick both. Or some of you have some other specific uh, ministry that you are thinking of, you can fill up under others. Or if you want to serve all, hallelujah, we will call you for everything. Because God has, will give you a special soft spot for these people, okay? Which particular group of people? Now, this, besides the type of people you like to serve, it goes on with the issues or causes I feel most strongly about. Like, are you most uh, feel strongly about abuse, 
Education, uh, if you are a teacher, would you like to do something with education? Or finance, would you like to help people with financial planning? Health, if you are a doctor or a nurse or others, what else do you uh, feel strongly about? Okay, Like uh, uh, Joshua Tear, uh, he's, he feels very strongly about human rights all right? uh, and advocacy, so you can uh, put it in. Oh, we are in need of counsellors, no? So if you uh, you feel you can do counselling, please indicate somewhere. Okay, abilities. One that you excel at or love doing. Uh, things that you like to do. Example like Kenny Song. Uh, he would transcribe all the messages and he has uploaded that onto his blog. And you find that it has, it has turned into a ministry. A ministry that has reached far and wide across the world. His highest number of readers of his blog are from, the, are from Russia. So, you never know, uh, the thing that you like to do, uh, it can reach beyond the shores of Malaysia. All right? I hope a lot of people will click multimedia, playing an instrument. Because Elvin needs that. Uh, and I, maybe we have a lot of people who can uh, sing, then we can train up a lot of um, worship leaders. Don't have prayer. So if you can pray very well, also put there. All right? We need a lot of prayer warriors. Okay, then the next one, personality. Okay, here you are given uh, two statements. Example like the number uh, the first one. How are you energized? I'm more comfortable doing things for people or being with people. So if you are more comfortable doing things for people, you put number one. If you are more comfortable being with people, hallelujah, praise the Lord and enjoy it only, then you put four. Alright. So it depends on where you, you are. Don't have to think very hard, all right? This, this one is not an exam. Then the last one is experience. It talks about ministry experience, but I want you to think beyond ministry experience. Experience in your work as well. If you can, uh, you have been an uh, accountant, put down there, accountant. If you have been a uh, teacher, put there. If you have been a uh, plumber, put there. If you have been an electrician, put there, okay? Uh, or you have been a barista, put there. Next time, if we start a coffee uh, shop or something, uh, coffee house, uh, we will call you. And when you have finished, maybe you put up your hands and we, uh, the ushers will come and collect from you.
Before we leave, I just want to leave you with one question. Do you know that some of the best learning is done through great questions? It's when you ask the right questions, the good questions that you learn, that you progress. And uh, one of the good things about all these mainstream traditional Christian groups is they have something what we call a catechism. A catechism means you will go through a class where there are questions and there are answers. And those questions are questions that answer the main important questions of life. And so there is a question in the Baltimore Catechism, question 6. And it says here in that question, um, can we have the question please? The question is, why did God make you? Have you ever considered, why did God make you? And the answer is, God made me to know Him, to love Him, and to serve Him in this world, and to be happy with Him forever in the next. Don't you think that's a very good answer? Here, most of us know God and we say we love God, but not all of us have fulfilled the third part, which is to serve God. And so even as we come to an end and as you fill up this form, my question today is, will you serve God today? You love God? You know God? You love Him? Will you serve him? Let us all stand. Father, I thank you for the good gifts that you have given to Tabernacle of Praise. Each and every one of the people present here, each and every person represented here, is uniquely shaped by you, uniquely created by you, uniquely made by you for a special purpose. And so today, even as we have filled up this form, Father, I declare, O oh God, that in the name of Jesus, you are going to release your gifts mightily, O oh God, into the body of Christ, into this church, O oh God, that the lives, these gifts shall be discovered, shall be developed, and shall be deployed for your glory. And so, Father, I surrender each and every one of us into your hands. May we together, O oh God, on this journey, get to know you more, O oh God, love you more, O oh Lord, and serve you more. And so, right now, I just give thanks for these people of God, we thank you for this assembly and in the name of Jesus, I just declare, O oh God, that they are going to go forth with the spirit of power in their lives. Power to be able to accomplish all the things that you have placed in their hands lives of God, that they will be able to go forth and be overcomers in the situations that you have placed them in. You will also, in the name of Jesus, I also release the spirit of love that you will cause them to be able to love as you love. That you will cause them, O oh God, to be able to walk in the, in the love of God with their friends, with those around them, O oh God. That they will be a true testimony of whoever you, of the wonderful God that they serve. And I also declare, O oh God, that you are going to release the spirit of self-discipline into their life. That they will never forget the discipline of communion with you, O oh God. That they will keep, O oh God, the word of God close to their heart. That they will be able to serve you and love you, O oh God, by the Holy Spirit. To come before you in prayer and intercession. And that, Lord, you will also declare, I also declare that you will also release, O oh God, the discipline of community into their lives, O oh God. That they will be... Um, Find a home, a belonging in the care group and also in this church. So, Father, I bless your people, O oh God, that, Lord, they will always find increase in all that they do. They will go forth, O oh God, and experience your righteousness, your abundance in their life. That, Lord, your protection is upon them, your provision is upon them. And that, Lord, you will favor them in all that they do, O oh God. That wherever they go, O oh God, they shall reap the blessings of God because in blessing, O oh God, you, they will be blessed too. So Father, I just give thanks to you, O oh God, for all of my 
the people here, O oh God. Bless them, O oh God, and give them a good week. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.